this thing, I like to talk about this a little bit because this still gets in the media. And so I brought one. This is like a venom extractor. And for a little while, people were thinking, like, maybe this helps for snake bite. So, you, you know, back, back when I was a Boy Scout, long, long time ago, because I'm really old, I'm like 50-something, 50 52. So they would say, cut and suck. That doesn't work. And if you cut, I mean, you're causing harm. You can add insult to injury. So don't do that for sure. But for a little while, we thought, well, maybe the extractor works. Maybe it pulls out some venom. Because what it does is it's a little plunger, and it's a suction cup, really strong suction cup. So I tested it out, and I did it, and I found that it only removed a very tiny, minuscule, one ten thousandth amount of the venom that's introduced made no difference in outcome, and it caused an injury pattern in the volunteers that we used. And um, it also happened when people did it to themselves. And so I wrote an editorial that says, snake bite suction devices don't remove venom, they just suck. <laughs> and I put that in the uh, annals of emergency medicine for all evermore for people to see and read my potty mouth. I'm sorry, I'm very sorry, small people. Don't stop talking like that. So these things are not recommended as first aid. Cutting, sucking, tourniquets, placing ice directly on the wound, electric shock, drinking alcohol, unless you're legal drinking age. And, um, but you, what you should do is, you know, you should first call 911. We talked about that on the key points slide. What, and you, most of y'all, most of everybody has like an iPhone or something. So when you're waiting, what you should do is maybe take a picture of the snake. If he's still sitting right there, you're like, he bit me, and I should just take a picture of him. That way you can save it on your screensaver, and people will know, well, he was killed by that snake right there. That's what killed it. That's what took him out in case you die, right? <laughs> anyway, so while you're waiting for medics to come, those are some of the things you can do, and you can maybe you should get your affairs in order, say a prayer or two. I don't know. Most of that stuff doesn't really help, right? The other thing you can do is take your ring off, like take your rings off, like your wedding ring, as you see I've already done, and your uh, Aggie ring if you have one, or any kind of ring, because you're going to swell after a snake bite, because we talked about the injury pattern to it. She thought that was funny. The other thing you can do is um, if uh, this guy, which is interesting, he got bitten on both of his hands, the guy in the fourth, the, the guy in the fourth quadrant, and that's, there's a story behind that, but I used the picture to tell you that if you mark it, and time it, you, the, the doctor and healthcare providers can tell how rapidly it's progressing, which can help decide if you get antivenom. If it's progressive and rapidly, you're like, whoa, I need to give antivenom and I need to give it quick. Doctors, even doctors can figure that out. So, now that guy was bitten on both hands, and this happened in North Carolina. It was one of my first patients when I came here, and he, what he did was uh, the snake was in the path that he was mowing. And so he's like, he, he, he's, you know, he's kind of green. And so what he did was he kind of tried to move the snake out of his way. And it bit him on the hand. Well, now he's mad. And he's like, smack. He hits the snake with his other hand and it bites him again. <laughs> True story. I'm not making it up. 